I'm Helen Williams, and this is The Coach for the Coach, Connecting the Dots. Welcome to A Coach for the Coach. I'm your coach, Helen Williams, and so glad to have you guys here today. Again, as always, kudos to you for investing uh, all you coaches in your professional development. So, so important uh, for you to provide a great experience for your student athletes. Uh, before I begin, I want to let you know if you want to get in touch with me, just uh, DM me at my Twitter, HMW Sports. I'm also on Instagram, A Coach for the Coach. And uh, make sure you go to my Facebook page, A Coach for the Coach. We've got some great things coming up this year for you. So please don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions or, you know, if there's a guest that you'd like for me to interview that you haven't seen, some subject that you want me to cover for your professional development, just let me know. So today my guest is Dr. Janice Hilliard. She is the president and CEO of Hilliard Solutions. And I have a lot of respect for her and the work that she does. And when she starts to tell you about all the things that she's done, um, you'll understand why. So Dr. Hilliard, welcome to the show. Thank you, Helen. It's great to see you and great to be here. Well, I want, first of all, for you just to sort of give a little bit of your background, because that's going to inform people about why we're actually having this really important conversation today. Sure. Great. Well, I'll start out by saying um, I was a uh, college basketball student athlete, uh, played at the University of Houston uh, back during the Phi Slamma Jamma days. Uh, for those in your audience who are big basketball uh, basketball fans, and that's how I started my career uh, in athletics. Um, after leaving the University of Houston, I taught uh, and coached high school uh, tennis first, actually in Houston, in the Houston Independent School District, and then basketball and volleyball at the high school level and just really enjoyed it. And then went on to work in college athletics after a few years in uh, academic support and student athlete uh, development. Actually segued uh, from high school athletics into college athletics through the NCAA. I was an NCAA intern uh, kind of late in my years. So worked in academic support uh, and associate athletic director at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and also spent some time uh, here in Houston at the University of Houston as an associate athletic director, overseeing student athlete development programming uh, for student athletes. And was really fortunate during that period of time then to have an opportunity to transition to the professional level. Uh, joined the NBA in 2001, Commissioner Stern hired me out of North Carolina to develop the continuing education model for the Development League, uh, now called the G League. So I had an opportunity as an educator, athletic background in counseling and education and training to join the NBA, uh, be a part of the inaugural uh, D-League, created that model program, and then began working with the NBA teams, uh, overseeing the continuing education and the life skills transition and education for NBA players uh, on all 30 teams in the league. Also did some work with staff training and development for league and team player development directors, which was really enjoyable. And then had an opportunity to liaise with college athletics and help those guys who we call one and dones uh, transition from the college uh, level into the um, professional level. So very exciting time and just having an opportunity to work at all levels uh, of sports and athletics from uh, actually middle school level, you know, at some point all the way through uh, through the NBA. I told you folks, she's got, she's got serious uh, street cred. <laughs> um, but, but I like that you have a broad range of experience, which is, and it's unique experience too. It's, it's, it's an eclectic group of experiences that um, I think make your Hilliard solutions and the things that you do and are going to do in the future uh, important. So please explain to our audience what uh, Hilliard solutions is and the genesis of it and why you felt the importance of developing this com com uh, company? Sure. Um, you know, I spent 15 years um, at the NBA at the professional level. And like I said before, about a half a dozen years between college athletics and also at the secondary um, level. And, you know, around 2016, after being there 15 years, you know, I was thinking about my career experience and what I was really passionate about um, in terms of career development in sports and athletics, and how do I uh, bring that passion and all of those years of experience uh, into a space where I can really help athletes be successful, 
um, and also help those who work with athletes be successful. And so I was kind of looking for what's next in terms of my career transition and where do I want to do that and be able to share these great experiences. So the idea of Hilliard Solutions uh, came about in 2017 when I transitioned. And really our theme is helping professionals help athletes succeed. And so what I want, really wanted to do was to transition again, all of my experiences, all of my learning and how do I uh, approach the issues that we have in athletics at all levels? How do we create um, really a holistic model for helping leaders who are in this space really deal with the challenges that they face in athletics and working with student athletes and professional athletes um, as well. I also, you know, as a woman who spent my career in athletics was at a dilemma in terms of transitioning. How do I do that? How do I take what I've learned, what I've done uh, as an academic in some ways? Uh, how, do I, how, how do I transition into entrepreneurship, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach uh, folks who are studying to be sports and athletics administrators, but I didn't really know how to do that. And there wasn't really anyone to help me do that, to show me how to make that transition. How do I take my skill set, my experiences, my passion for helping others? And so my own experience transitioning from the from not only the NBA, but from college athletics into professional sports. And prior to that, from high school into college, I really didn't have any guide. Um, I didn't have a coach. I, I didn't have someone to help me to really focus on me and my professional development. And so that was another sort of impetus. And so as I thought about, you know, my passion, my experiences, and how do I help others transition, particularly women, women in the sports field. So all of these things kind of came together uh, that began to formulate, you know, what I wanted to do at Hilliard Solutions. And so essentially uh, there are three basic areas. We offer career services, which as you mentioned, is a part of career coaching uh, for women, curriculum development services, which is programming for athletes, at all levels and also consulting. So you do what I do, you're a coach. I'm a coach for the coach. Yes. <laughs> that in for that, that book of yours. Yes. Um, <laughs> so what I think is important is that one of the reasons I do what I do is I, I still am ultimately, even though I'm not on a daily basis intimately involved with student athletes, I'm still very much concerned with their quality of experience. And I think that it's important for the people that are working with them um, to be well-rounded. And you mentioned one word, which I completely agree with holistically, so that they can properly give uh, the student athletes the quality experience that they deserve. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, again, being a coach and even in our coaching, when I'm working with women um, and I work with guys as well, but we target women in particular because how difficult it is, you know, to get into this space sure. um, as women and leaders and, and people of color. Um, the holistic piece of it is critical to me because throughout my almost 30 years uh, of working in this space, you see all different kinds of models in terms of what people really call uh, development and what is professional development and what is athlete development and what should that look like? And so there really um, isn't, uh, wasn't a model for that in terms of the athlete himself, herself, what does success look like? What do those components look like? And even for those of us who work with them and are charged with their education, with their development and transition, uh, there's no real set model. Folks tend to work in their areas of expertise. Right. Sports, uh, performance person, that's what you do. If you're a, an athlete development person, life skills, that's what you do. But really bringing all of those together is what's missing. And that is in the 360 athlete development model that we created at Hilliard Solutions, which is again, um, the outcome of my work for these 30 years at all levels, working at middle school, high school, and college. And so in this 360 uh, model, which is applicable for all levels, um, there's basically five domains um, that we feel that make up uh, important components for athlete success, as well as those who work with them. So those areas include education, include career development, they include uh, economics, they include sociology, and they include uh, sociology. And within those five do domains, those topics that actually you can find on our website um, at HilliardSolutions.com, you can 
uh, download the, the, the model for free. It's, a, it's an ebook and it has these five domains and the topics uh, underneath these domains that really need to be a part of athletes education um, at all levels. And so if you have these components, these make up the holistic approach to what they need. And these five areas, you know, as you probably noticed, are not just within sports because athletes and everything that we do in sports is impacted by society. It's impacted by our, our health and well-being. It's impacted by the business of sports, sure. uh, impacts us in different ways. And so these five components actually are integrated with each other. So if you are working with an athlete, what type of education does she or he need? Uh, in terms of athletes' rights, in terms of financial literacy um, at all levels. How does, um, for example, NIL is a big topic now in college athletics. So when we look at NIL, you know, and, and what's actually trying to be accomplished here with now, as you know, student athletes can be compensated for their name, image, and likeness. So programming that is only focused on one piece, for example, right, which is their social media, which kind of falls in the sociology domain. Uh, in media, in our model, um, if that's the only piece that we're looking at, we're not realizing that the financial piece is also involved. They need to know how to not only manage their money, but how to choose advisors, how to read contracts and those kinds of things. Um, so what type of education do they need? The mental health and wellness piece, right? We all know that from social media, whether they're athletes or not, the impact that mental health has on athletes in particular. We've seen at the professional level, some of our tennis uh, professionals, what happened during the Olympics. And so what happens, you know, when we incorporate NIL as an example, not looking at all of these other dyna dynamics, you know, how the banking part of it, what are they going to do with contracts and money? So we need to look at those factors um, integrated. In addition to that, at the next level is how do these things play out, for example, in the athletics department? Right. As we look at student athletes and how they're getting this education, the brands, the contracts, you know, the uh, relationships that athletics departments have with sponsors. Right. right. Outside of that domain and even within the campus community. Right. DEI. If we take DEI for an example. Right. Which is a topic of focus now for us in athletics at all levels, professional and and college. So when we put when we look at DEI, DEI is everywhere. It impacts every element, every aspect of the university, of the athletic department, and of the athletes. And so, tell, tell our audience what DEI is. Just so DEI, that. yeah, thank you. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. okay. So it's it's sort of the the buzz acronym now, but but okay. D, D and I, diversity and inclusion, has is not something new. But as we know, as a result of the George Floyd situation last year, sort of the racial injustices that have been you know, revealed and talked about in this country nationwide. We know that athletes have become leaders in this space. Uh, they have become empowered as athletes. And so, frankly, as a result of this increased focus right, on social justice, athlete activism, racial uh, justice, and these kinds of things with athletes now in those leadership roles, you know, actually, that's where the emphasis has come in sports on DEI. So we see now, like the NCAA, we see the professional sports leagues, we see conferences, and everybody has uh, DEI positions now, right? Mm -hmm. We have DEI programs. And so when we look at that, you know, there's from the leadership perspective, management perspective, and then there's the student athletes. But you also have on your campus, right, a Title IX person, a DEI person. And so how do those units work together? And we should think about those in terms of educational institutions, sports organizations that are really going to be successful uh, by not looking at just one issue at a time or what the latest trend is. You know, next year it might be something else. But those institutions, uh, if they're not looking at the problems holistically and how these different issues and, and, and pieces are integrated, then they're actually missing the boat and they're going to always have problems. And so at Hilliard Solutions, what we do is try to help institutions, sports leaders, look at the challenges and issues of sports uh, and the dynamics of integrating athletes, which are the product, um, into this industry. How do we help them look at a holistic and a comprehensive perspective so that they have a model, they have a way of evaluating what they want to do. They have a way of evaluating what's needed and how do you actually incorporate what you need in order to be successful um, in their work. 
So you're essentially helping them with roadmap. Yeah, essentially roadmap, blueprint. We call yeah. it 360 athlete development model uh, at Hilliard Solutions. But yes, it's a, it's a blueprint. Uh, no different in sports than having a game plan. Exactly. You know, when you have a game plan, you know, you're a coach, Helen, for a lot of years, you don't go into coaching your student athletes with just talking about what the offense is going to be for the upcoming game, right? You're talking about the other team, your component, what their offense is, what their defense a is. Complete scouting. The history has been, it's a complete scattering report. You're looking at, at five years back, but you're also looking at the, um, the status of your personnel, and you're integrating as a coach, you know, where are your assets? So an athletic department looks within its department. It looks within its student athlete development, looks within the whole athletic department or the sports organization and says, where are our assets? Where are our strengths? And one piece to that, <clears throat> excuse me, I would add is measurement. You know, metrics in sports on a quantitative perspective, we measure everything, right, as a coach. Mm -hmm. We need to do that in other areas and aspects to have a complete DEI model, right? To have a complete NIL model, you must have metrics. You must have components where you can measure your success. And the other element is training and development. Coaches go to coaching school all the time, right? Every year. So folks who work in this space of athlete, student athlete development, you have to train, you have to educate and continuously equip people to meet these challenges that our sports leaders face every day. So that's a great segue to what was going to be my next question was specifically, how do you help train and educate uh, people that are in uh, student athlete development? Mm -hmm. No, we uh, basically we use our model. We use the 360 degree model in terms of coaching and training student athlete development professionals, coaches, support staff, psychologists that work, we utilize our model by first teaching them about the five domains that are necessary to have in any programming, in any initiatives, in any strategies. The model is the foundation for everything that we do. Programming for student athletes, putting the unit together in terms of staffing. And then secondly, through our coaching and through our professional development training, we train people who work with athletes on the skill sets that they need. In other words, how do, we, how do we decide, how do they decide how to choose a financial education provider? How do they create a strategic plan for their student athlete development program? What are the components that go into that plan? How do you measure those? What are those metrics? What are the skill sets that one needs then to execute the programming? And that, that's a part of the professional development and training that we also offer to our schools, to our institutions and to our community leaders who are involved in the sports industry. So I, I wanna transition and talk about your uh, symposium, which I think is really key to adding to all of the things that you're trying to do, um, you know, with, with, your, with, your, uh, with your, your business and your company. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, yes. The uh, Women in Athlete Development Symposium and Networking event, uh, it's in our fourth year. Uh, 2022 will be our fourth year. We're very excited. Um, it is that training ground that you just um, indicated, Helen, like how does this actually happen? Where do we teach people and train them? This is a great example. Our first year was in uh, 2019. Our inaugural year was with the University of Central Florida and the DeVos uh, Sports, Sports Business Management Program. We partnered with them. The second year in 2020, we partnered with the University of Florida Sport Management Program. And this last year uh, with the University of California, Berkeley School of Social Welfare. And so we are looking to bring together what we've been doing, able to do successfully, women who are interested in entering into this field of what we call athlete development or looking to advance in the field. So whether that be graduate students, recent graduate students at a sport management, counseling, social work, they wanna learn how do you get into this field? And then secondly, for women who are already in this space, how do they advance? Do they want to be a senior woman administrator? Do they want to be a team president one day? What are the skill sets, uh, the experiences, and what is the network that they need to uh, generate in order to move into this space? And then finally, um, our audience is also women who are not necessarily working in the sports domain, but are looking to, uh, they have either a product or they have a service that they can provide to athletes or folks that work with them, sports psychologists, 
uh, folks who have their own business, who have services for athletes at all levels. So these three populations we service and we also bring in leading women uh, in this space. And they actually conduct the sessions, the training sessions. Uh, they talk about their experiences and background. What education do you need to get into this space? What kind of experiences do you need to get? Um, what the job is like to work in student athlete development at the college level, at the professional level, um, as a practitioner, you know, as a person who has their own business. And how do you advance? How do you um, sell yourself and market yourself as a woman in this space? What is your special sauce? You know, as women, what do we have to offer that makes us competitive? You know, what's the interviewing process like? But probably, Helen, most importantly, our event focuses on networking and building a network for women in this space for other women. In our Hilliard Solutions community network, uh, we have a private Facebook page, for example, where we share information about jobs that are out there through our career coaching service. Um, we work with women on their individual skill set. You know, how do they determine how to choose a position? How do you apply for that position? What should be in your cover letter? Um, how do you establish a network, an, an information interview? You know, what is that like? Because as you know, to get into sports, you really have to have a network. It's probably there, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that is our biggest asset. And so we build a community um, of over 300 or so women now at this point who network with each other share experiences with each other and support each other. And at Hilliard Solutions, we're very excited uh, about next year, 2022. Uh, we are looking at April 6th and 7th. It's typically that week in April. Uh, and we're also open to any sponsors uh, that are out there, any universities or individuals who would like to support our event. You know, we would love to have you uh, join us by contacting us, either just by completing a, a contact form on our website or they can email me uh, directly, but we're very excited uh, about next year. And so what is your website? Just again, so we'll make sure people know. Sure. It's uh, hilliardsolutions.com is our website. And if you go there, you can get a sense of kind of what we do, the things that I've been talking about uh, generally during this session. But also, if you want to take a look at the uh, 2021 uh, Women in Athlete Development Symposium, you can go to Women Symposium dot hilliard solutions dot com women symposium dot hilliard solutions dot com you click on that link you'll get a, a good sense of what the event is like and what we did in 2021 uh, or you can email me at dr j at hilliard solutions dot com great and i'm just going to tell you right now that i'm going to be one of your sponsors so oh, you got that you're all good thank you you know what that's one thing that we discovered a year or so ago, I had a couple of colleagues, actually, folks who provide student athlete development services um, for college athletes, actually for professional as well. And they said, we want to know how can we help? How can we sponsor? And I've actually had a couple of people who have sponsored individuals the last couple of years. And what better way uh, to show your support for women, uh, for diversity, just Absolutely. in terms of promoting the professional development uh, especially for some of these grad students who don't have any money, right? Um, but this is a professional development opportunity. It's a networking opportunity. And so thank you. Thank you so much. We, we, we're excited to have you. Got, got a sponsor here. I love it. <laughs> well, I think the work that you do is important and I want to do anything that I can to, to, to support it. So um, I appreciate that you're taking the time to come on here. I'd like to bring you back again next year so we can talk about how much your program has grown because I do think that it, um, you know, people will catch on and, and definitely I think the university should consider, um, you know, using your, your company because of your holistic approach. And I, I hope they're, you know, athletic directors that are progressive enough to, to, to know that. And Helen, I appreciate that. And, and let me just throw in here as well, since I know that uh, the majority or a great deal of your audience uh, is coaches. I think that coaches are sort of, I saw the interview you did with Coach Curry uh, at Nisha that went on to work with the, the, the Trailblazers with Chauncey Billups, one of my favorite, favorite NBA guys I had a chance to work with when he was at the Pistons. Um, but I really love your audience. And I think that in this space of athlete development at all levels, we really uh, underestimate the uh, importance of engaging coaches in what we're trying to do. Because folks like uh, Coach Curry and others, 
they understand it. They grasp this total development and they are committed to that. And so we are constantly training coaches, uh, working with athletic directors, administrators, and engaging what they bring to the process because they have a lot to offer and can be of great support to our athletes if we engage them in our work. Awesome. Well, we'll uh, we'll get to work on that for you. So we get <laughs> you some more opportunities. Dr. Hillier, thank you so much for your time. This has just been very informative and appreciate that you are educating my, my audience of coaches. I just the importance of being intentional and, and genuine about student athlete development. Well, thank you. And I'll say also to your audience, we're on social media as well. Um, they'd like to follow us on Instagram. We're at Hilliard Solutions. And on Twitter, we're at H-I-L-L-I-A-R-D-S-O-L-U-T-I, the number one. There you have it, folks. Get in touch with Dr. Hilliard. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been a lot of fun. We appreciate you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you have enjoyed the information we have provided, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you have a question or comment, please let me know by leaving it below. And why stop there? Click on another video and continue learning great tips from a coach for the coach.